Leadership strengths are qualities that help leaders to be effective. This includes what motivates us in our decision making. One of the top skills to develop as a leader is how aware we are of ourselves, according to multiple sources. Effective teams are made up of people who both understand and complement each other. Today, we're talking about self-awareness. This includes identifying our personality, those aspects that not may not be the norm, and working on them. What's important is to learn, grow, and develop areas. The way we are perceived is a great place to begin. It's difficult to hear a consistent perception of ourselves when we cannot see our blind spots. This leads us to recognize how our behaviors affect others, giving us motivation for change. Understanding others' emotions and how our words impact them is part of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness helps us manage our behaviors with others. The way leaders manage and recognize their quirks and weaknesses contributes to their overall effectiveness. Self-awareness theory states there are two main outcomes when we compare ourselves against what we know is right. We either pass, finding we align with our standards, or fail, finding we do not live up to those standards. With a discrepancy, we can either work towards reducing the discrepancy or avoid it. The deciding factor could be our perception of how our efforts will affect change. If we believe we can improve alignment with our standards, we will make efforts to change. If we feel hopeless about making the change, we will not see value in the effort to move forward or act. That's how powerful hope is. There are seven steps to developing our self-awareness. Keep an open mind. When you can regulate your own emotional world, you can be attuned to others' emotions. To be a successful leader, you have to be curious about new people and all they have to offer. This shows that you can be a team player and don't need to be number one. The more open you are to others, the more creative you become. Number two, be mindful of your strengths and weaknesses. Self-aware individuals know their own strengths and weaknesses and can work from that space. Being mindful of this means that you know when to reach out for assistance and when you are good on your own. Stay focused. An important part of being a leader is making connections, but you can't make those connections if you're distracted. Train yourself to focus for long periods of time without getting sucked into social media, emails, and other small distractions. Set boundaries. A leader needs to have strong boundaries in place. Be warm towards others, but say no when you need to. Be serious about your work and your passions and keep your boundaries firm to maintain the integrity of your goals and the work you put into them. If you're kind with kindness, setting boundaries, and you're getting pushback, what is that saying about that person? Because we should all as human beings be able to set boundaries. It's a good way to test whether that person is someone that we can trust, to what level we can trust them. If we can set boundaries and they really need for us to say yes, and the response is, okay, I'm curious about it. And they're asking us questions that is very respectful. But if they react, then maybe there's an agenda or something's going on with that. And it's a red flag. Know your emotional triggers. Self-aware individuals can identify their emotions as they're happening. Don't repress your emotions or deny their causes. Instead, be able to bend and flex with them and fully process them before communicating with others. So if we're in an emotional state, if we're feeling fear, sadness, anger, it's not a good time to talk. But we don't put that talk off. We regulate those emotions, get them under control, go to peace, calm, happiness, and have the conversation. 
And if we need to go back and deal with some of that personally, then we're self-aware enough to do it, to say, okay, I'm putting it on the shelf for this minute. I need to regulate these emotions. I need to go for a walk, listen to music, drink some water in the moment that water cooler talk can save us. And then we go back to it because if we ignore them or stuff our emotions down, they won't go away. And then we'll start getting the root of bitterness. We'll feel resentful. We'll be grouchy. We won't understand why we might get sick. It just affects us. Embrace your intuition. Successful people trust their instincts and take the risk associated with them. Your instincts are based on the survival of the fittest and the need to succeed. They tell you what to do next. Learn to trust your intuition. Now, as a Christian, I talk about intuition and I know the Holy Spirit is in my spirit. And so if I'm getting a check in my spirit, that is real supernatural intuition. Um, so we do have a cutting edge advantage with this. And I need to listen to it. And I need to stop, even though it's inconvenient, and say, oh, what is that about? It takes a lot of patience. And it takes growth to get to that place, to feel that check and respect it. Because if we override it, then we're not going to be as sensitive next time. We're going to be more callous the more we override it. The more we listen to the check, the more sensitive we're going to be to his leading, to that still, small voice. And the Holy Spirit, he will bring to remembrance the word that we've hidden in our heart. He'll remind us. He'll set those paths before us, illuminating them. We just need to listen. And when we're stressed and distracted, we forget to listen. And we make the mistakes and we make bad decisions. And he's there when we realize it. He's there, open arms. He forgives us. And we say, oh, I missed it. I didn't listen and I knew better. What was I thinking? And so there are times we can't see the forest from the trees and we need to take that water cooler break and take care of ourselves. That's self-care right there. Practice self-discipline. Good leaders tend to be disciplined in every area of their life. It's a character trait that provides them with the enduring focus necessary for strong leadership. So if there's an area of your life that you don't have self-discipline, give it priority because the leadership experts are telling us here that having self-discipline in all areas is a, a character trait of an effective leader. In summary, benefits of working on our self-awareness includes connection with authentic self. So there's nothing hidden going on. What we're showing is what is truly there. Increased confidence and creativity. Better decision making, development of character, increased satisfaction of people. As human beings, we can make the changes necessary to develop our leadership skills, and self awareness is the first step. Let's begin today with the understanding life is a journey and we're walking this pathway together. Let's be encouraged to move forward and upward today, living a holy life as advocated by Paul in his teachings throughout the scriptures. Is a profound and transformative journey for believers. The Apostle Paul, in various letters to early Christian communities, emphasizes the significance of holy living as an integral aspect of the Christian faith. And so we do, we want to live holy from the inside out. And we want people to understand and see that. And as they understand and see that, and we're self-aware, then they're going to have respect and follow. And they're going to follow our example. Isn't that what Paul said? He said, follow my example. Wow. Who can truly say that today? That's what leadership is, is when we can say, follow me, follow my example. 
do what I do. That is our goal. So Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you with humility and we ask you for your mercy and we ask you for your guidance and we ask you to purify us like gold and help us to be that example that you would say, follow him, follow her because they know me and they're real about things. They're not perfect. When they miss it, they're going to admit it. And they have humility and they have love and they have sincerity. Follow their example in the community. I mean, ultimately we're following Jesus, but you hear what I'm saying here? People look to people. Have you noticed that on social media, people would get followers? On um, YouTube, people have followers. I mean, I look at some videos and in half an hour, they have thousands of views. And I'm like, wow, you know, people are following this person. We're looking for someone to follow. And we are the hands and feet of Jesus. We're the body of Jesus in the earth. And may we be an example to follow is my prayer in Jesus' name.